Hey, coaches, welcome to another episode of Coaching Youth Hoops. Uh, I am your host, Coach Bill Flitter. We are uh, having a, this is a special, I guess, podcast today. Um, one, we don't have Steve. Steve started his uh, high school uh, basketball uh, practices this week, so he's a little tied up. So we're going to talk about 11 reasons why Zoom action is better than ball screens for youth basketball players. Now, if you've been around basketball the last year or so, I'm sure you came across these, this idea of Zoom action. And we're, I'll talk about what that is. But, uh, you know, the ball screen has been around basketball for a long, long time. I don't know about you, but I've struggled with teaching ball screens to developing players or it, it takes a lot of a lot of time and practice to get it to get it right and to you know come off with screens the right way you know I always said I could teach a a day uh clinic on just setting screens and coming off of screens you know they 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 can get pretty um intricate and if you want to you know master that skill it does take time to develop uh, and then uh, about uh, not last summer, the summer before, I was just getting frustrated with uh, kind of motion, uh, the simple motion offense. Uh, you know, some read and react stuff. I was running some circle motion and things like that. And uh, you know, one of the reasons was the weak side, um, and I had a lot of ball watching going on, no matter what I would tell players. Uh, and show them what to do. There was a lot of ball watching going on on the weak side. So that stagnated the offense, create, clogged up the lane quite a bit. So when I stumbled across Zoom, I thought, oh, this is really interesting. Um, interesting action. And could I implement that at the youth level? And of course, you know, a lot of times Zoom action is just a play or something that you run. And I thought, well, after running it a few times, I thought, can this be turned into a continuity offense? Uh, more on that later. But let's talk about why Zoom action, again, might be better in uh, as part of the developmental stage for youth players. So first off, what is Zoom action? Uh, now, if you're watching this um, on YouTube, I'm going to show just a quick um an animation of what Zoom Action looks like. I'll do my best explaining um, it to the listeners if you're just listening. But basically, Zoom Action uh, has, um, it, it involves uh, three players. You have your point guard here um, who dribbles at one of the guards, in this case, two. And two then sets a, a down screen for the player in the corner. And again, if you're watching this, that's player four. Okay. So again, your point guard dribbles out one of your guards um, who sets a down screen for one of the players in the corner. Okay. Then at that point, uh, one does a ball handoff or a pitch to four who tries to get around the corner and one rolls to the basket. And then as one is rolling to the basket, um, the two who just set the down screen comes up and makes uh, themselves available for a kick out for the ball for four. Um, that also uh, forces the defender, uh, two's defender to, are they, to stay with one or are they gonna go with two? So um, it creates a, a, a nice spacing on the ball side. So that's your basic zoom um, zoom action. But uh, the, the reason I like zoom, especially at the youth level is there isn't a lot of ball handling. You don't need elite ball handling. So that's one of the reasons um, I love it. Because from year to year, if you're like, you know, most youth, co youth coaches, right? You don't know what you're gonna get. Uh, you have limited practice time and uh, the Zoom, um, with Zoom, you don't need, you don't need elite ball handlers. Um, also, it increases uh, scoring opportunities. Now, you, uh, 
if on the weak side, um, what happens is you end up um, in a full zoom action, you ended up having some nice double gaps and triple gaps um, for the ball, uh, the ball or the zoomer to come off of um, and get around the corner. So that's always nice as well, right? We want to, I always encourage my students to get um, lots of paint touches. And then from paint touches, you know, if we have a look, we're going to score. If not, we're going to turn and kick to an open person. Uh, it's also hard to guard because there you can do a lot off of the zoom, uh, especially now when you have that player in the corner coming up to get the ball hand off. They have they have some momentum trying to get around that corner. Then you have this the ball, the person handing the ball off who can slip. Uh, you can do you know your kick out. So it's really hard to guard, especially that quick action in ball handoffs. Now you can also get right into another ball handoff on the on the weak side too. So um, that multiple ball action puts the defense on edge. They're, they're in constant motion, and all of your players are in motion when it comes to the zoom. And you know, as it kind of the back to point one, not having elite ball handlers ball handlers you also with zoom everyone can get involved even your even your kids who might might not have that basketball iq or they're still developing maybe they're not quite athletic um they're just simply you know they can do ball hand down screens it's simple action uh that they can get into without a lot of instruction or basketball iq um, it also teaches players how to play and not just plays. At one, on one level, yes, it is a set kind of drill or a set play. Um, and what I'm going to show you, um, how you turn that into a continuity, or we're going to talk about how you turn it into a continuity offense. Um, but the Zoom action, um, you're looking at you can incorporate different reads of course you have the roller that's the easy one you're listening if players are um the, if the defense is switching and then you can do something off of that if the defense switches but it gets into this idea of basic reads for developing players that they can listen and you can incorporate into your offensive scheme uh the and uh the next is it, it it's unpredictable. Um, again, I want to emphasize you can keep it very simple, uh, but as your players get a little bit better and a little bit more comfortable with it, uh, the ball handoff situation becomes un unpredictable. The ball handler, the person with the ball who's going to do the ball handoff can continue on and not hand the ball off. Uh, they, uh, the, uh, you have different... Um, reads like i said before off of the person in the corner they can slip the screen go right to the basket and you got a high low action going on so it really keeps the defense on its toes um, and you can switch up actions as your players develop also um it reduces you uh the turnovers um so i've been doing zoom for about a year and the amount of turnovers we have is completely reduced one because players know exactly what to do where they should go there isn't a, a lot of unneeded dribbling in the half court set and it because of the simplified nature of what zoom is um you know we're not we're not turning the ball over as much as we have if we're doing passing and cutting um, in that five out kind of motion typical motion offense. Uh, the other thing is uh, with Zoom, I I taught it at different varying levels of of players. I've have um, I have a AAU team that I taught it to, um, and they are they picked it up right away. Um, uh, and then I also had a rec team that I, you know, meet with once a week and I was uh, pleasantly surprised how quickly they got the base layer of zoom. And uh, now they are starting to incorporate some of the, some of the reads. So if you have a team, you know, as we all do year to year, that changes the zoom action is great to introduce because you don't need those highly skilled um, players all the time. Uh, it's very simple action that can be highly effective. 
the other thing is everyone is involved on the court, all five players, which, you know, we, you know, we don't want anyone standing around ball watching. So uh, with everyone involved, it um, uh, players are learning, um, the, keeps the defense busy on the weak side as well and uh, ensures, you know, we get that engagement and better skill development for all players. The other thing is I've been running it against um, zone defenses, which I absolutely love. So that gives me, I only have to do one offense. Uh, I don't have to do a zone offense and a man offense. I can do one offense. It's, it's especially powerful against a 2-3 zone. I've used it against a 1-3-1. One, one. I've used it against a 1-2-2, two, two, um, just setting lots of screens on the zones. Uh, this idea of the ball handoffs and the, the the idea of skip passes goes away um, because you're just doing ball hands up ball, ball handoffs up at the top, and players are moving from side to side. So again, let's go through uh, just a quick recap. So number one, you don't need elite ball handlers to run Zoom. Two, you create lots of scoring opportunities through drives, kickouts, redrives. When you do a kickout, if you don't have the shooters, um, it's hard to guard with the constant motion and movement of all five players on the court. Um, it empowers those kids that are less athletic uh, to get involved as well. You're teaching players how to play, not just plays, which I absolutely love, especially at the youth level. Uh, you keep opponents guessing what's going to happen next. Are we going to do the ball handoff? Are we going to slip? Um, are we going to drive to the basket? Are we going to drive and kick? So it has uh, lots of versatility that way. Number seven, you're cutting down on turnovers. And that's what I absolutely love. Um, it's easy to implement. Like I said, I've been doing it for about a year and a half, varying levels of basketball IQ and we get it down in one to two practices. The, again, this is the basic Zoom action. You can use it against um, uh, zone defenses. I've used it against a 2-3, a 1-3-1, one, one, and a 1-2-2. Uh, two, two. And, I, you know, the one thing that I, what I noticed right away is players are having fun because of the fast motion um, integrating um, the ball handoffs and the constant movement movement and and because everyone is involved, everybody's enjoying the game of basketball and and that's what you want at the youth level. Um, so go check out uh, go check out Zoom, but uh, uh, but I want to I want to I want to bring something up to you. So having discovered the the power of the Zoom action and experimenting with it over the last year, uh, how do you implement it into your coaching philosophy? Well. I did the hard work for you. I created the blitz attack motion offense and it uses basic zoom action, lots of dribble drive um, and motion uh, and puts that all together. And again, what I call the blitz attack. And it takes this dynamic zoom action and puts it into a, a continuity. Um, so you can, con you can continue to run and uh, run the offense in the half court set. And I really uh, I've been been pretty excited about sharing the blitz attack with you. I've been running it now for almost a year and a half and uh, at uh, at the youth level. and it has really changed the way my players have developed. Uh, and all of the other benefits I was talking about, the Zoom action, plus it puts it into a continuity uh, and it's easy to learn. So, if hey, coaches, go on over and you can go check out the Blitz Attack Offense. If you go to the blitzattackoffense.com, again, that's blitzattackoffense.com. You can read all about this continuity offense that incorporates Zoom. Uh, and I think you really, I think you'll really enjoy it as much as my players have have had a ball um, learning it using it and successfully scoring right all players just they just want to score all right coach thank you for your time again head on over to the blitz attack offense go check it out all right till next time
We'll see you later, coach.